Ms. Davis, um, it's probably, well, I, I won't ask you, but I have three daughters. And when I read the, when I read the Wall Street Journal story, I was uh, shocked, but, you know, in some ways not surprised because I think we've seen a lot of this. So when you are looking at your applications, your services, do you balance the mental health needs of Americans versus the addictive nature of the products that you sell? Thank you, Senator. I think you were going to ask me whether I, if I have children, I do. I have a, a 20, 23 year old daughter. Um, I, I, first of all, I, I don't agree with the, the characterization uh, of, our, of our product, but in fact, we do think quite Wait, what, seriously what, what, about what, the what don't you, and, sorry, I'm, I'm going to interrupt here. What don't you agree with, I just said, addictive nature? Yeah, what, I said yeah, addictive yes, nature versus mental health. What two phrases did you not agree with? So I, I, I disagree with calling our, our product uh, addictive. I also think that's not how we build products. But to, to your question, you know, let me. Uh, I mean, I want to drill. I want to drill down. Sorry, I'm going to drill down on that. You don't think your, you don't think, your products are addictive in terms of teenagers constantly wanting um, to be engaged in social media. Uh, Senator, as as a as a uh, parent and as someone who talks to parents quite quite a bit, it's uh, certainly parents, all parents. I haven't met a parent who doesn't think about the time that their child spends on spends on on their phone. And one of the things actually that we've done to actually address to try to address that is to make people aware of how much time they're spending. There's a dashboard where they can see it. They can actually set a reminder to uh, to let them know that they've been on so that they'll get off. In addition, we're looking at something called take a break, which would prompt somebody when they've been on to take a break. So that that I think get, gets at your question. But so I is your bit, but it, let me just, health. I, I, I want to, well, I'll let you get to mental health, but I want to drill down on this addictive element. But isn't part of your business model to have more eyeballs for a longer amount of time engaged using your services? <laughs> Respectfully, Senator, that's not that's not actually how we build our products. In fact, we made changes to our news feed to allow for more meaningful interactions, knowing that that would impact the time spent. In fact, it did impact the time spent by about 50 million hours per day. But we did it anyway because we were trying to build a positive, more positive experience. So can you uh, address the issue of mental health? Um, were you aware of these mental health challenges for teenage girls? I'm sure you've seen the statistics more broadly about suicides for uh, teenage American females. What are you doing to ad address that? And were you aware of these challenges, um, according to the Wall Street Journal, that were, was in that study? Certainly, certainly, Senator. I am very aware of the issues that that teens face. I, I used to be a middle school and high school teacher, um, and had a teenage daughter, and was a teen myself. And and being a teen comes with comes with some with challenges, and we that is reflected sometimes in our in our platform. And what we have done, and why we did this research, was to identify where those challenges may be. Um, on our platform and how we could potentially change our product to help. What we saw with that research was that in out of 12 issues, really challenging issues, issues like anxiety, depression, lo uh, loneliness, sadness, um, that out of 11 out of 12 teens, more teens said that they thought that their experience on the platform was helpful than harmful. Now, the, the teens where they found it but harmful, do you Do you believe that? I don't. We actually want to make those changes. We want to make changes to actually provide them with a better experience. And, so and do you, uh, do you sorry, I'm going to interrupt. My, my time's getting shorter. Okay, sorry. Do you have evidence that that those issues, isolation, mental health, do you have evidence that those challenges and mental health challenges are actually helped by using, for example, Instagram more or less? Are you telling me that, that 
the use of your products actually limits those challenges, I think it's almost obvious that they increase those challenges. So what's your testimony today? I, I, thought, you, I thought you said that to actually reduce that. Is that, is that what you just said? Because I, I find that quite remarkable. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Senator. Actually, um, there's a blog post that, that our, our Vice President of Research has released on this. I, I want to be really careful that this research is not causal research. It's what teens said about their experiences on our, on our platform. And it, the numbers that you're talking to speak specifically to teens who identified as suffering from these particular issues. I think what's really important here, though, is that this research actually is being used to make uh, product changes, to identify places where we can be more supportive of teens. So for example, take a break is something I mentioned earlier uh, in some of the questioning. This is a, a, something that we would surface to, to a teen who may be, may be online for a long period of time and give them an opportunity to take a break so they don't rabbit hole down a direction that, that may, be, may be not positive. Uh, we're also looking at something called nudging, where we would nudge them towards uplifting or inspiring content because they told us that that content can be, can be helpful. Our goal here is to really, right now, the research shows that eight out of 10 teens say that they have a positive to neutral experience. Our goal is for that to be 10 out of 10 and for it to be positive. We want to provide a better experience for teens. Okay, let me, um... Let me end here. I'm going over my time, but I don't see any other uh, senators waiting for questions. And I know the chairman is going to come back to wrap this up. But um, look, I think the issues of mental health, of depression, of isolation, um, I think the social media engagement, particularly for teenagers, uh, enhances these challenges. And I think we're gonna see this more and more studies. And you mentioned take a break. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Chinese Communist Party. Matter of fact, most things they do, I instinctively disagree with. But you may have seen recently that they have, the way they do things, it wasn't a law, I guess it was an edict from on high from the party and Xi Jinping, but they have, uh, told Chinese teenagers to take a real break and um, to limit the amount of time that a teenager in China can spend on social media or gaming or things like this. Um, do you think the US government needs to look at doing something like that? Um, an edict, if you guys won't I personally believe that we're going to look back like 20 years from now and see the massive social mental health challenges that were created by this era when teenagers had phones in their faces starting in seventh and eighth grade and continue to have them. And we're going to look back and, and we're going to go, what in the hell were we thinking? Maybe it might be the one time where we say, why didn't we, like the Chinese Communist Party, say, take a break? What do you think about the Chinese new edict on taking a break for over a billion people? And should the United States government think about doing something like that? Mandate, not, not relying on you guys, because I do think your business model in part is eyeballs and time spent online with your services. I mean, I. I think that's pretty obvious. If you have less viewers and less time, you're going to get more. You're going to get less revenue. So, can you really, on your own, help people take a break, or do we, the U.S. government, have to help people take a break, like the Chinese are doing right now? Uh, th respectfully, Senator, I, I think that there's some complexity here. So for example, during COVID, young people used apps like ours to actually stay connected. It was a lifeline for them. They couldn't go to school. 
They couldn't go to their colleges. They couldn't do their, uh, do their graduations. Social apps actually provided them with a way to stay connected to their friends and their family. So I think it's, it's a, a bit more com complex than that. That said, I think I would certainly like for app, apps like ours to build experiences where parents can actually have some control over the time that their children are spending, similar to what we did in Messenger Kids. I think parents would far more welcome the ability to set time controls than to have an edict on high tell them how, much, uh, how to parent their children. So what do you think of the Chinese edict? I know you guys aren't allowed in China, but what do you think of it? As, as a parent, I'd much prefer to be able to, to determine my child's time online than to have uh, China tell me how to, to, how to raise my child.